Well, Dinky Ponies is really just me and a team of mini Shetland ponies. Um, we go out and visit lots of different people um, in care homes, schools, hospitals, children's homes, lots of different places. Um, it's interesting when you said about where did it start, because it kind of just evolved. There wasn't really like a light bulb moment, moment as such, but I, um, a couple of a few years ago, I got given a couple of mini Shetland ponies and I was freelancing for a um, groom at the time. And um, he, I don't know what to say, actually, it was Mark Todd, but he's quite a well-known okay. inventor. And he, quite well-known, he's got Sir Mark Todd. Um, and he um, had a field next door to these mini Shetland ponies. I asked who they belonged to. To cut a long story short, I sort of tracked down who the owners were. And um, we just of went to, of the ponies and we went to visit them. And um, over time, we got more and more involved with them. And the lady said, you know, would you like to have them? Which is what I did. And I brought them back to where I am now. And someone else then approached me and said, do you want two more? So I thought, well, I, I can't really have lots of little ponies and not do anything with them. Mm-hmm. The ponies cost money. I need to be doing something with them and they have a job. So that's when I started to think about perhaps doing um, parties and... Um, things for the children that uh, would benefit them and the ponies. Mm-hmm. So that sort of the, the ponies get a job and the children get some um, experience with the ponies. So like ponies for hire, like at yeah. petting zoo? At yeah, different... so, yeah and, yeah, and kind of like, I, again, I didn't really have a plan. I just thought I'd go with the flow. So um, I applied for the council licence, which I didn't realise would be quite so complicated, but that was fairly complicated and then trying to find insurances and stuff to, to cover me. Um, and then off I kind of went a few months down the line and it was really good. That was last summer um, and it was really popular. Um, but towards the end of the summer, I thought, you know, parties in the UK aren't going to be great outside. So... Um, I put a couple because of, this was during COVID, right? Uh, this no, this was last summer. Okay. So this was um, so right after, basically. Yes, yeah, so it was yeah. just the sort of first kind of proper year after COVID, like everything back to normal again. Um, and so I uh, put a couple of calls out to some care homes, and um, I was just so shocked with literally it just went ballistic. Mm. Um, I think COVID had a big part to that because I think where everybody had been doing not very much, especially in care homes and residential homes during COVID, I think um, their enrichment hadn't been as good as perhaps it had been before. So that probably did help me. But yeah, literally it just exploded. I I have never advertised. I've only ever done social media. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, and that's exactly how I found yes, you. Yeah. yeah, which is, I, I mean, I, I always think social media is a, is a good tool and a bad tool. I, I like it as a, as a marketing tool um, and a platform to be able to display what I do. And um, I, I, I just love sharing. Because the thing is, obviously, I work on my own with the ponies a lot. I do often have some people come along and just sort of some moral support. But I'm often there on my own. So it's really nice to be able to share the experiences with people, which is what I like to do, obviously, with the consent, because of that... that the, the privacy is a little bit complicated, but so long as obviously you've got the consent from the home and from the residents, it's great. And then I love to be able to show everybody what the reactions are. And, and, and it's just, I love it. Yeah, I really enjoy it. That's amazing. So did you have any previous, so obviously I know that you you grew up around horses, yes. right? Yeah. Did you, um, what was your, uh, I guess your previous history or experience when it comes to like the therapeutic side of animals not a massive and I've never worked in the care sector so um it's really interesting and a massive eye-opener because I I did always want to be a nurse I wasn't clever enough so I couldn't do it in the end but I did always want to go down that route um but no I I literally um just went into it blind I've, I've done courses and stuff now yeah it wasn't until just recently when I started to go into um special schools with children with massive challenges um physically mentally and I thought I need to have more knowledge I need mm-hmm. to have more behind me because I could say something that actually is going to impact them right do more um, harm than good exactly and, yeah. so um i yeah so i've started to do some courses and some online training and all that sort of stuff in conjunction with what i'm doing already but no i had no actual other than doing psychology at a level mm. yeah 
I haven't really got any um, experience and that sort of things. But I do often say, especially when I go to, well, most places, to be honest, I'm there to look after the horse and to help with the interaction. Mm -hmm. But with the therapy side, if they are looking for very in-depth therapy, that's when the staff would be on hand to... Interesting. In, yeah, interact with them as well. So, okay. um, but yeah, but a lot of it's to do with talking anyway. So, um, it would be sometimes it's just literally every every session is different. So, I'll always say, say I'm going to a school. I'll always say there isn't really a set procedure. I literally turn up and it's very fluid. So I will go with how the children are. Every child as well. Um, has different challenges. Right. Some of them will be motor skills, communication, some can't walk, some completely non-verbal. Um, so it really, really depends on the child. Some will be very scared of the ponies, some will be trying to jump on the ponies. Um, so it's really understanding and adapting to each and every need and each child. Um, and I guess it can it can vary day by day, right? Because, you know, maybe one day someone's having a, a worse Yeah, absolutely. Than yeah, yeah, no. I mean, so the homes that I go to regularly, there are a few homes I go to once a month. And yeah, some people, it's like us. We all have different days. Yeah. So some days someone will be very involved. Some days maybe not so much. Um, there is a couple of homes that I've been to. There's one that I go to regularly, um, an assisted living. And when I first went... Uh, it was one of my first ones, actually, I remember going to last at the end of last summer. Um, one of the residents of the six was the only one that was really interacting. And I thought, you know, maybe this isn't the, the best sort of port of call, but it was fine. The session went fine, mm -hmm. but it was much more to do with the staff, which is what does happen quite a lot. So the staff got very involved and then the one resident and the others all kind of just sat. They stayed, but they sat and watched um and they were all very hands-on they were able to do things but they were worried but as I've gone along and I've been like I say every month for the last almost year now they are very able horsemen and women because they they are I turn up they get the brushes straight away they go up straight to the ponies this is got the no staff fear. The no this is the residents oh, amazing. yeah yeah the, um a few of them are non-verbal but they I mean, I, I should do a before and after because it's, it's incredible because they have gone from not wanting any interaction to literally not letting the ponies go mm. after the hour. And it's so lovely to see because it's their confidence and they've got their self-belief and their self-worth and they've actually realised that they can do something. And um, this particular home said they really struggled to get these residents out and about and to do things. And this is the, one of the only things they all really enjoy doing. Oh, that's nice. So it's really like, yeah, when you hear stories like that, it really makes it worthwhile. It's really lovely, yeah.